All right, let's talk about Assange, Julian Assange. Yes, sir. Interesting case. Defeats the United States, you might argue. Well, he definitely uh, showed weaknesses in the government's uh, apparatus, right? He took serious uh, classified documents and he published it all over the internet. He had a website called WikiLeaks. That's what he's, that's what he's known for, right? And he, yeah. And he was in touch with um, a uh, military officer by the name of Chelsea Manning. And uh, Chelsea was feeding basically um, all of these wires, videos, even intelligence, like confidential informant inf- cooperators, people that are talking and giving information, essentially snitches. He was telling them, Chelsea Manning was giving their names, where they were, journalist names, uh, whoever was cooperating with the government put a lot of people in danger. So that he was basically charged with the Espionage Act. And right. the Espionage Act is uh, very, very serious. Chelsea Manning is an interesting character in all this. Some people will feel that she is a super hero, an American hero, an absolute hero of uh, freedom of information, a hero of um, government limitation, whatever you want to call it. But can I just say, like, the reason we're talking about this is because the big news is that he has been released from prison Julian Assange extradited to Australia where he faces no more prison time and he's a free man he's a he's walking free so as a criminal defense attorney RJ would you say that he fought the law and he won well depends on what your what your definition of winning is uh remember he was basically self exiled for many years in a in a very small one bedroom 300 square foot makeshift apartment in uh, an Ecuador embassy and in the for, UK for, in for, London for years. Yeah. So, yeah. and then after that, he was kicked out of there because basically he wasn't being an easy uh, visitor. Yeah, he was doing he, crazy things, uh, including defecating all over the carpets or doing some crazy things. And they kicked them out. Basically. Well, also he was in there for leaking government secrets against the U S right. I think he effed up by leaking government secrets against the leaders of Ecuador, which is why he ultimately got kicked out of that. That control. too. Yeah, that's why he got kicked out. That too. Yeah. I mean, so not a smart move, right? Well, don't bite the fan that don't bite the hand that feeds you. No, it was certainly not a smart move. It's just, a, is it an ethical move? Is it a moral move? Is it a? It was um, not a smart move. Not a smart move. Somebody invites you in your house, you don't. No, shit, you don't shit on their carpet. Not a smart move. Yeah, but I mean. Um, Let's go back to where it started with Julian Assange. So he, you said he started WikiLeaks, which was this big um, media organization. Yeah. Sort of uh, underpinning it was the idea of freedom of information, freedom of press, that the government should not keep secrets from its own people, um, so on and so forth. So WikiLeaks endeavored to find every government secret it possibly could right. through anonymous contributions, through sources in the wherever and it published everything. It just dumped everything. But I'm all for freedom of, of information, but I, I'm also an advocate for keeping government secrets. We, we can't let people, other government agents, know what we're doing. I think it's ridiculous and stupid to just throw it out there on the internet and just have everybody read it because you're putting people's lives in danger. These people are cooperating. They're putting their lives, their family members in danger. They're, you're putting a lot of people, um, operations in danger. The whole cooperation from the government the system itself is in danger when when i don't know that you the united states are going to protect me i'm not going to work with you anymore as a cooperator we don't want cooperators around the world not working with us anymore because they're afraid they're going to die so it presents a problem to the system itself of extracting information from cooperators so there's people that are helping the u.s government they live abroad their identities are secret right and that Greatly helps us as a nation. Yes. Gives us intel. Yeah. Maybe there's spies. And maybe That's it's not. The, it, That's what they are. It's not the greatest idea to publish a list of these people. Right. No. They'd be dead, tortured. You know, sometimes their family members killed in horrible ways. And uh, so, although I understand the spirit of information, I don't think that that was the right way to do it. Because, you know, what you're doing essentially is you're putting everybody in, at risk right so we can agree there's some government secrets that it should be illegal to um betray i think so i would never do that i, I wouldn't not put the government in harm's way i would not put people in harm's way i understand the spirit of it but the way he went about it was completely wrong hopefully they'll never do that again because we we learned a lesson that although of course we want the government to be honest with us that's not our job as citizens to audit the government's 
secret uh, war operations or find out what they're doing. That's not our job. That's not your job. It's not my job. Let me play devil's advocate. Some of the stuff that Julian Assange and WikiLeaks uh, leaked was, yeah. was sort of showed off war crimes that the U.S. government was committing that nobody knew about. Like, for instance, the U.S. government was stating that there wasn't an excessive amount of collateral damage in our Iraq invasion and that we were taking great care to ensure the safety of innocent bystanders when we were going in for these kills. WikiLeaks showed this footage. You, you probably remember it. Did it come across your desk? I mean, I just remember seeing it on email and seeing it on, I don't even know if there was YouTube at the time. There wasn't, I don't think, but it was on the internet. Suddenly you're seeing like people walking down the streets of Baghdad with black and white, you know, um, in, or footage from a helicopter, an Apache, I believe. And then you hear the pilots talking and then you see them just open fire on these four people. Maybe one of them has a weapon, maybe not. It's hard to tell. But clearly that helicopter was not in danger at that moment. So whether right or wrong, everybody saw that footage because WikiLeaks leaked it. And I think there was incredible trauma to people when seeing that. And they started to sort of question the morals of the government for better. I mean, and the question, question, how much care are we putting into avoiding collateral damage? Why all these videos? So is that good that he leaked it? Is it bad that he leaked that? What do you think? The better question is who gave the power to Julian Assange to be the arbiter of facts and determine what's a war crime and what's not a war crime. Why does he get the authority to do that? Who is he? What qualifies him to just disseminate information out there? Who, who, what qualifies Assange to make, determine whether or not somebody's life is in danger? You just can't willy-nilly throw paperwork out there in, in the interest of or under the guise that you're doing it because you're trying to have transparency. That's not the right way to do it. Because even if we all know, listen, we all know the government lies to us. We all know the government does covert operations. We all know the government commits war crimes. But that's our government. They're doing it for our interests, Right. So from my perspective, from my perspective as an American, I allow my government to do what they believe is necessary. I'll, we have auditors for that, professionals, okay? We have levels and, le uh, and levers for government to go and audit these people. Julian Assange is not one of them. Fair. And I do think that we want to allow the government to have a certain level of secrecy in dealing with us of course. in a way to protect us. Of course. But we should also have a healthy skepticism and fear of government overreach and that's what i do as a civil rights attorney i make sure the government has its checks and balances there and that's what we do as lawyers right that's why lawyers are out there you're right and so if the government is piercing their or if they're going too far in invading our privacy our private domain looking into things maybe they don't need to look into we have some guardrails against that one of them is rj manwilly it's called lawsuits and there are tons of lawyers out there. You could file amicus briefs. You could file injunct uh, injunction injunctory relief uh, briefs. There are so many different uh, tools for lawyers to do. You just can't, like I said, if my client gave me uh, an, a file like that, I wouldn't just disseminate it on the internet. Who am I to put I that on the internet? Agree. You, even if they committed a war crime, then what? You release it, and then what? You expect the government to say, "Okay, Mr. Rolange, you got us." Okay, yeah, uh, Miss, 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 Mr. Assange, we're going to change all our practices because you exposed us. Is that what it's trying to do? No, and I. What's well, the end game? Uh, well, maybe it's to empower people, and this is what I mean because I agree with you that we have guys like you who are professional criminal defense attorneys to come mm -hmm. in and prove as a sort of like a buffer between regular people in the law to help the law not overreach, to help the system not look into things it doesn't have the right to look into to not invade our fundamental rights of privacy and so on and so forth but only when we know the government's doing it when we don't know they're doing it we can't really protect ourselves against it so the idea is that people like assange and anonymous journalists if i'm just going to steal man the other side journalists who have anonymous sources who provide government leaks they publish those in effort so that we will know when our government is overreaching, bring in people like you to help us. Well, the First Amendment only protects freedom of the press to a certain level. You can't just, because you're a journalist, publish anything. That's not within the purview of the First Amendment. So, yes, you might have tips from a government employee. And, you know, whenever the legacy media, CBS, ABC, NBC, gets that kind of information, they know when to print it and not print it. Sometimes, sometimes they don't do it because those journalists, they went to college, they studied journalism, they studied ethics. 
They understand what's going on. They've been trained to do this. Julian Assange is not a journalist. I mean, just because you call yourself a journalist doesn't make you a journalist. So interesting. He's, just, he's a guy. He's a guy with a website that's encouraging people to give him information. He's a punk rock rebel in a lot of senses. Like you're right. I mean, so there's self regulation on an ethical level inside the school of journalism. Of course. And where in if they get some evidence of government oversight like i'm a journalist and let's just say and i get a phone call hey tony this is your tip at the white house your anonymous source i just got some news that just going to shock you the president's not well and this is the reason why and why and why blah blah maybe i'm looking at that as a journalist and going oh man like do i have an ethical duty to print this so that the american public knows about this to prevent some kind of government problem because our our system is based on the people checking the government's power. Like the only power the government has comes from the people, from the constitution. So do I release that so the people are more aware or do I, is there a national security interest in not releasing that information so that our enemies don't find out that our president's not well, so on and so forth. So you're saying the journalists kind of self-regulate and make some kind of a, a choice there based on their own ethics my understanding is in that situation, that journalist would go up the chain of command to the supervisor, have a meeting, for example, at the Washington the Wall Street Journal or the Washington Post. The supervisor would say, we're not running the story. And then you'd argue, say, why not? We, we got information that the president is sick. Then that person says something to the effect of, well, I spoke to the Department of Justice. And the Department of Justice feels that if you release this information, it's going to uh, denigrate or it's going to lose respect with the president. There might be a fallout in uh, Korean Peninsula somewhere. Or something mm -hmm. might happen. Mm -hmm. War might break out. Don't do it. And then at that point in time, if the CBS wants to still run the story, the government could go and get an injunction. See, there's levers going on. There's things going on. But with Assange, he just pressed the button and uploaded it without going through any channels or filters. That's the issue. But sometimes we get government leaks... And the government's not happy about it. So how right. does that work? Well, they're still, they they have, just let it go through? Sometimes it goes through regardless. Some, some of these government leaks go. I mean, look at the, look at the Watergate. Look at the Watergate, uh, the audio tapes. That was detrimental to the president. That was released. Yeah. I'm sure there was a lot of pushback against uh, the two individuals that broke that story. Yeah. Um, but they still broke that story. And that does go against government interest. And so... It, it has happened before, but not, so the question is, not it, war plans. Does it help the American people more than it hurts the American government? You might argue in the, in the case of the, uh, the um, uh, Watergate and bringing down Richard Nixon, maybe you could argue it helped the American people because they were enlightened more and they understood the corruption behind the scenes or the political maneuvering that the White House was doing in that case, so on and so forth. Or you could say it hurt the government of the U.S., I don't think that's the test. I think the test is whether or not it will cause irreparable harm or injury to others, whether there will be impending death upon others if that information is released. When they released the audio tapes of Nixon, 20, 30 people didn't die the next day. When Assange, Assange released the videos, I'm sure a lot of people died or got, were placed in harm's way or could have been killed. So there's a, there's a huge difference between discovering the Nixon tapes and then releasing these videos because, oh, okay. because, because you have things that are going on right now out there, hundreds of people and different strategies that are going on that could be interrupted. True, but I mean, a, a lot of the biggest, uh, um, <clears throat> the biggest splash I think Assange made was these videos of the kills, right. the collateral damage. Right. right. I don't know that you can argue that because that video came out, a lot of people will die. Maybe, but it's maybe not, because that video came out, the reputation of the United States is destroyed to some degree. Like Assange just chipping away at our reputation, right? Not only our reputation, but so the people that died over there, uh, there could have been other things that the government doesn't want you to know about, backstories behind why he was killed. Uh, True. Other, other things that you and I not only don't know about- We don't need to. Don't need to know about. Yeah. So, you know, there's always- Three sides to the truth, their side and then the truth, right? The United States side, Iraq side, and then there's the truth. So the videos make everything look bad, but that doesn't necessarily mean it, it is what happened.
It doesn't mean it purports to be what it is. Even in law, when you see a video, you think, like, oh, that looks bad. But what about the other angle? What happened before, 15 minutes before? Was there any kind of provocation before? Right. So that's why the government doesn't want this kind of thing to leak out because it not only makes them look bad, but it doesn't present the full story. What if it presents the full story and therefore they don't want it out? Should they have the right to keep it in? I have a better question for you. Why does Julian Assange have the right to present the full story? Why, who, why, why give him the power to present the full story? Who else? It should be somebody, well, from the government. It shouldn't be. It should. So the government's going to police themselves? They do. <laughs> now they do. Every government has internal agencies. Uh, the police has internal affairs that police the police. The government has internal agencies that police themselves. The OIG's office, office in, 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 in the uh, OIG polices themselves. The Department of Justice police themselves. They all police themselves. So why do we need freedom of the press? For, for checks and balances. For checks and balances. We want them there to let them know we're here watching you, so be so careful. You better police yourself well or else we're going to right. come in and police And then you. When, it, when it reaches that precipice where the, the press believes that the government drew the line, that's when it starts hitting the news. That's when you'll see the Nixon tapes being turned over. That's when you'll see whatever evidence being presented uh, in the Iran Contra case uh, against Reagan, you, you saw. Maybe we shouldn't be talking about this because it might get <laughs> tossed out. But you know, you saw evidence coming out that uh, Manuel, uh, that Oliver North was was giving illegal guns to, to to Iran in exchange for hostages. You know that was exposed at some point, and it went in front of Congress. We could talk all day whether or not the you know whether we need to know that as as a country. But I understand the principle that. You shouldn't just take anybody and have them access this document. I mean, would I want you to have this document access? I wouldn't want to have access to these documents because then I'm the custodian of records. Then I have a responsibility to make sure who's getting these documents. What happens if this document fell in the hands of the wrong per person? What happens if Iraq got it before, before we found out about it or Russia or Korea? Maybe there's cable wires of conversations going on between senators that we don't want them to find out about that'll destroy years and years of operations of and, and money. Or, yeah, or, or of, yeah. So or who, is, who, who is Julian Assange to come and step on everybody's toes? In this case, he was just a, a tech startup that blew up. I well, mean, we, he's like a Napster. Yeah, he is Napster, and, and what happened to Napster? Napster got taken down also, right? Another illegal activity that disrupted the music business and then went down, but not after causing a lot of harm. And right. I think he did too. Yes, he did. Yeah, he knew what he did also, and that's why he was hiding up in that little hotel in Ecuador because, <laughs> because he, knew, he knew that he was in trouble. And, and frankly, I think that's why people were throwing shit at him you know with the sexual assault cases i thought that was all set up i thought people were going after him that was before so so let's so he yeah. did what he did wikileaks yeah. leaked a bunch of documents yes all of which um hurt the u.s in some way many of which hurt the whatever we talked about the brand of the u.s the right the perceptions potentially people were in danger you said there were lists of people's names assets yes that's super dangerous super for dangerous. those people i don't yeah. know if anybody got killed i'm sure i don't know if anybody got killed but i, I know either. according to the indictment when they when they filed it against him one of the accusations they said that the plea concludes was that all of these documents were top secret and that manning basically took this classified information illegally downloaded hundreds and thousands of classified documents and transmitted this information and what's interesting is Assange was so scared. They offered him a deal. Here's what happened, right? Before so you say that, sorry to cut yeah. you off. You brought up Manning. Yeah. So Chelsea Manning, formerly Bradley Manning. Yeah. He was a man who transitioned into a woman. Yeah. Now he's che she's Chelsea Manning. Um, was the soldier who somehow accessed all of this treasure trove, if you want to call it that, of national security information. Yes. Wrong deeds by the U.S. government, videos, documents, <clears throat> military secrets, names of assets, and gave them all to WikiLeaks. It was Manning that gave it to WikiLeaks yes. and said, release this. Julian Assange just presumably just pressed the button and released it or had his people do that. Yeah. So Manning went to prison. Yeah, Manning went to prison also. He downloaded uh, digital reams of classified documents and files that were sent to Assange to post online. And these bulk files uh, were posted for everybody to see. And basically, uh, Manning didn't even want to do it anymore. Manning uh, told Assange that, you know, that's all I really got left. And then he replied, and this is where the espionage comes in, that he dug deeper. He replied, curious eyes never run dry in my experience. Who who said that? Assange. Okay. To to Manning. Basically, 
keep digging. You got more. You got more. And then in about 2010 and 2011, he disclosed that he had more leaks that came that Manning basically took out, including approximately 75,000 Afghanistan war-related activity documents secret that were classified up to the secret level. 400,000 Iraq war-related significant activity detainee assessment briefs at the secret level, 100,000 State Department cables, which means there were printouts of conversations, some of which were classified at the secret level. All of this was disseminated. I have to steal Man Manning's point of view here. He, she's not at the table. Let me do my best for her, which is that this country is founded on the basis of pushing back against government power. This country is founded on overthrowing a corrupt government and starting a new one from scratch with the people in power. And so is it, isn't it a, a duty of a soldier like Manning, a citizen like Manning, a, 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 an American-loving patriot like Manning who comes across information that would shock the U.S. public, information that shows just how corrupt and ethically wrong our government is? Isn't it their duty to then somehow get that out to the American public? They're patriots, are they not? I know she feel. I believe she believes she's a patriot. Like it did not help her to release this information. Like she got really reamed hard for releasing this information. Here's my answer to you. If Chelsea was in my office, Chelsea Manning, and she said, "RJ, I got this treasure trove of information." I said, "Chelsea, what are you trying to do?" Yeah, I'm trying to change the world, Mr. Manwellian. I'd say, you know what? You're going to go to jail for. You're ready to do that? Yeah. And if she says yes, then you know what? She's a martyr. Right. And I would discourage her, highly discourage her and say, don't post those videos. Mm -hmm. You're going to be arrested. You're going to go to prison. I have a duty as a criminal offense attorney to ethically tell her not to do that. Prison for the rest of her life, potentially? Well, I mean, she was there for a while. Could I, she be I, executed? No, no. no. Well, espionage. I mean, under espionage, I guess. But I remember the, the last time anybody was executed were the Rosenbaums. World remember War II, yeah. World War II, the two, the husband and wife. That was the last time we executed... Yeah. Uh, basically anybody in, under the espionage act it's really rare to execute uh, espionage uh they usually give life 20 to life 25 to life so i would tell chelsea like what are you trying to do here oh i'm trying to change the government do you really think that releasing this the government's going to say okay i'm glad you did this no, we're no, not no, going to no. change our system no she's saying i'm willing to be a martyr like i know they're going to bring me down they might even try to kill me but mr manwellian you don't know what they're up to they're killing innocent people. They're going around with Apache helicopters, and if they All see right. four guys walking down the street, they're just blowing them up. Uh, and then there's a school nearby. They blew that up, too, and guess what? I found the records of that, but nobody knows. CNN doesn't know. Fox doesn't know. They're not even going to touch it. Mr. Assange at WikiLeaks told me if I just give him everything, he'll, he'll share it with the world, and the world might be a better place. Well, I would tell her that realistically, the world's not going to be a better place. By you submitting that information, people will get killed, Chasey. You're trying to stop people from getting killed. You are going to personally get people killed because of you. Are you ready to go tonight? Are you ready to go tonight to bed, sleeping, knowing that 100 people are going to get killed because you released their names? So what you're saying is hypocritical, in my opinion. You're trying to make the world a better place, but you're going to kill innocent people because of what you're doing. So answer that. So... You're saying, Chelsea, you're ideal, you're you're idealistic, naive, and misguided. I think so. You're gonna cause more pain than you than, than you think you're gonna help people. I think so. I think she was naive, she was misguided, her heart was in the right place, but she went about it the wrong way. We can't we can't just have people go and crack into your credit card, go into the government accounts because they don't like it, go into school records because they don't like it and expose, that's not, that's illegal. We have privacy rights, okay? It's like doxing the U.S. Yeah, you can't, dox, you can't dox the U.S. It doesn't work that way. It's not your responsibility. It's not Chelsea's responsibility. Uh, I understand she feels bad about what we're doing, but guess what, Chelsea? That's going to keep going on. That's happened since kingdom come. The United States has always been at war since I know. I don't think we've ever not been in a war since the inception of this country. And it's not your job to decide who wins the war, what information is going to come out, and how the war is played. It's not your job. Right. That's just my position on it. I get your position. I, I know, And I know there's people on the other side who believe Chelsea's a hero and Edward Snowden's a hero for releasing... Hero for a what? I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I understand the spirit of it, but hero for what? What did they do that changed the world? What did Snowden do that changed the world? What did Manning do that changed the world? If I'm Snowden's best friend and his biggest advocate and his, um, his, um, his uh, 
confidant, I will say, Mr. Manwellian, here's what Edward Snowden did. He released information of the greatest illegal search and seizure operation ever to be run on this planet. And guess where it was run? Here in the United States, where it's actually illegal to do this kind of search and seizure under the Fourth Amendment. We didn't know it was going on. They were doing it with bots and websites and 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 scanning people's emails and phone calls and AI back then, I'm sure today. We didn't know it was going on. So our constitutional rights were being violated every day and we just didn't know until Mr. Snowden came along and showed us. And now that we know what's changed, how's your life better? Now you know, so what? Now Pres- Mr. Snowden is in exile for the rest of his life. Chelsea Manning. Oh yeah, he's prison. stuck in Moscow. And by the way, what you think that for years we didn't know the government's listening? Every time I'm on the phone, I always assume the government's listening. When I talk to my clients, I say, assume there's cameras everywhere around you. We're living in a postmodern 1984 Orwellian world right now where there's cameras in every stop sign, every corner, Every ring device, I have cases right now, murder cases, that 90% of the time are solved. You know why? There's video cameras. I get the video evidence, as opposed to 20 years ago. What happened? There's witnesses. I don't even need that. I have the ring cameras now. I've got dash cams now from from cars, from Teslas. So we have that. We got everything there. So I don't know. I think she so, was. So I think Manning was naive. How did she not know wait, she was being recorded? But it shouldn't bother us at all that our that every word we type. And I think in this uh, in the case that Edward Snow- Snowden revealed, yeah. it wasn't just even stuff that you typed that was being recorded and buffered. It was things you typed, deleted, and typed different shit. So so your even your thought process is being recorded by the shocking. government. And that's shocking that that actually exists. That shocks you. Yeah, a little. It doesn't bit. shock me. A little bit. Not at all. I mean, we talk about Big Brother. Are you okay, saying... So, so it would have shocked me right now if you, your Mac, and my Mac were able to listen to what we're saying right now. If somebody actually tapped in, the government wanted to tap in and listen, that wouldn't shock me. Not that that's possible. I don't think that's possible because God bless Tim Cook from Apple who's got the best privacy security uh, in the world. And I know that because they couldn't hack the San Bernardino killer's phone. Tim Cook didn't let that happen. But is it possible that this phone is listening to me in my laptop? Yes, and I'm always cognizant of that fact. Okay, all hail Tim Cook, the pr- protector of our privacy, but he did not build these cables. He did not build this sound mixing device. He did not build these mics we're speaking right. to, or even this bottle. Right. So, there are, yeah, so we might be getting surveilled in right. ways that we don't know or expect. Is that okay? Because that's what was happening that Snowden revealed. Well, even if it's not okay, what do you want to do? You want to, you want to tell the government to stop doing it? And if they tell you to stop, do you think it's really going to stop? But are we are we okay with not having any checks and balances then? Just giving up? The checks and balances are knowledge. Be aware and act accordingly. We Just were know. aware because Snowden released it, though. I don't think so. I knew way before. Who didn't okay. know that the call phone conversations were being listened to? Come on. No, well, we did. We really didn't know that keystrokes were being recorded, and Key- your thought process was being analyzed. Well, maybe not the keystroke bubble. I mean, right now, even um, when you're next to a computer, I don't underestimate anything the computer could do. Me too. But facial is- recognition, thumb recognition, voice recognition, I agree, but we're- AI technology. I mean, sure. everything is on the table now. Right. And and going back to what we're Snowden, looking backwards, a little. and even going back to Snowden back then. All right, maybe Snowden it wasn't as apparent. But why did it have to be that apparent that quickly? We would have found that anyway at some point. It didn't have to be released with illegal cables. It didn't have to be released with illegal videos. We would have eventually found out about it. Government can't keep secrets for very long. You know, it, eventually we get used to what the government knows and we adapt with what the government does. Okay, you're advocating for a little bit of a slower release of that information. Maybe over time the government and not disclosed. a reckless, not a reckless inf- uh, dissemination of information. That's interesting. The reckless informa- dissemination of information is what makes it illegal. I got you. It's the tidal wave without care or caution right. of like just take it all. Man. That's right. Yeah, you, do what you will. Look what the government's doing. Yeah. Take it all. And I'm not sorting through any right. of it or curating this. Just I'm not, re- I'm not redacting it. Just I'm not dumping. reviewing it. Yeah, dumping. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah. Do you think that's that's not reckless albeit let's be fair that snowden did not do that he was not a reckless dumper he but he caught manning did he, he manning did apparently through julian assange so right. just to parse a little bit of the difference snowden took a little bit of ethical guardrails contacted some mainstream media outlets got some professional journalists to meet you know them, why handed them do you the know why and said you use your journalistic discretion right and do not jeopardize national security yeah because he That's was working because he, cool. he's an educated person that yeah. with that work for the nsa yeah he understands 
that what he was doing was illegal, and that's why he wanted to go through the safeguards. Yeah, Manning wasn't. In a sense, Assange it was wasn't. Civil disobedience, in a sense, just scaled to this national security no, level. C- he, civil de- disobedience is when you sit down on the protest in the school and say, I'm not moving. This is espionage. Uh, you're right, and I, I mean it in the sense that you know what you're doing is illegal, but you're like, hey, I'm going to push the ball forward for this country by just doing this. I need to and that's called And that's called espionage. I mean, it, let me ask you a question. If you were to, if you were to say, "I'm going to put my friend in a room and listen in that room to what the government's saying, just to make sure they're doing everything right," what's that called? That's espionage. I think you are spying on the government. You're spying on the government. Now yeah. you could turn around and say, "I'm not spying. I'm just making sure they're doing their job right." Checking. That's spying. Right. You can't yeah. do that. Right. It's not your job to spy. Gotcha. Now who's going to be the spy for the government? We could have a separate podcast on that. All, yeah. all the government is saying. We didn't give Assange the right to spy on us. Right. Who's he to spy on us? Who's, who's Edward Snowden to spy on us? The government is saying, we might be doing that, but uh-uh-uh. It's not your job to point that out to the, to the people, right? Yes. Now, we could decide, okay, you want to know who is the person responsible for that? Congress. Congress. You sit in front of Congress, Congress subpoenas people, and say, did you do that? Did you bomb those people, the four, four people or the six people in Iraq? Why did you do that? They have a right to ask questions. Congress has subpoena power. Right. It's not Assange's problem. It's Congress's problem. What would you have thought if WikiLeaks directed its hose of information right at Congress and nobody else? What if, what if Julian Assange just took this treasure trove of info from Manning and said, U.S. Congress, this is for you? What would you think of that? That would be very interesting if he did that and he didn't disseminate that. Yeah, didn't disseminate. The, the, I would think that'd be some cool, right? Congressman at some point would have a hearing on it. That would have actually been better and a better strategy right. than to anonymously drop it at a few civ, uh, civil rights pro uh, congressmen that would have been outraged and said, I'm not going to tell you who I got this from. I got it from an anonymous source, but we should have a hearing on it. Different story. That's not what he did. He went up. Oh, he does not. He just he plastered on the internet. Oh yeah, which is insane. Like you said, reckless. Yeah, S- super reckless. Malevolent, malevolent. Even. Yes. Even. Yes. Malicious. Yeah. Malicious. Uh, um. So that's why it's illegal. Look, the spirit. I'm. I'm down for the spirit. Yeah. I'm with that Ch- American spirit. I'm with Chelsea. Yeah. I'm with uh, Snowden. As far as the government shouldn't be Big Brother. Yep. Back the f off. Don't do this crap to me. But on the flip side, yeah, I don't want you endangering our government system. Do it right. Give it to congressmen. Let Congress. We have checks and balances. We have a system. Julian Assange isn't going to change the system now. I mean, is he saying that he's smarter than all of us and let him? Be the arbiter of all this? I don't think so. He's saying essentially there should be no arbiter. It's just gonna all go out there. And you're right. That's you can't you cannot hold any water without any kind of container. Like that, that's just free flowing, and it's just, it's a mess. It's and, chaos. And, and frankly, and frankly, if he kept doing that, I'm gonna be bold as to say he wouldn't be around today if he kept doing that. At some point, they would have taken him out because he's a problem for the government. I mean, if you have people, senators. Um, translators that are double agents that are really spies okay and these people are on the cable wires they're dead the government's not going to let you assange completely obliterate all of our assets okay i think he would have been neutralized at some point if he didn't uh if he didn't take this deal and the reason he took the deal getting into it you want to hear something well let, before we get to the deal let's talk about what happened he got he went to the uk yeah he after this leak he was arrested he was out on bail. Yeah. Wanted in Sweden. Yeah. For some other unrelated crimes, I think relating to women, sexual assault. Maybe those were trumped up. Maybe they were real. It was dropped after. So take be take it for what you will. So he's standing around the streets of London, going, "I'm potentially risking extradition to Sweden for these charges." Yep. Um, I know the U.S. is pissed at me, but they haven't b- brought any charges yet. I'm gonna go into the Ecuadorian embassy. Right. He walks into the Ecuadorian embassy and asks for asylum. Yeah, which is basically asylum just for the people that are listening to this podcast means that you could actually ask another government to protect you for certain reasons. And he asked for political asylum in this case. If you ever played hide and seek, it's where you run somewhere and go, safe. Safe, yeah. (laughs) So he tapped safe inside the Ecuadorian embassy. He's now in there. The president of Ecuador or the leaders of Ecuador say, yeah, cool, man. We like this. Free speech, right? Down with the U.S., down with the U.K. You hang there. You're good. We're going to protect you. So he lives in this embassy 
for how many years was it? A long time, seven years. Seven, seven years. Seven years. Some 2012 to 2019, something, something like that. Ridiculous like that. He's in there. I don't know if he's ordering pizza every night or if people are sneaking him food. I don't know what's going he on. He fathered two kids while he was there. What? Yeah. Oh, shit. Pamela Anderson visited him, was dating him. Did you know that, the actress? No idea. Yeah. Crazy things happened. She went on TV advocating for his, for his release. She needed publicity, maybe. Maybe. But the point is, he was doing crazy stuff while he was in that. And, God bless her. And, and that small, teeny, teeny, it's the size. He was living in a, like a big closet, basically. In the Ecuadorian embassy. Yeah. In just one room or something? With a cat. I think he had a cat. Yeah, you'd see pictures of him in the window. Yeah. And then years passed. he had passed. a balcony where yeah. he, like, uh, like an exile leader, you come out and he waved. Yeah, him. yeah. <laughs> and then as years passed, he looked more and more like Rumpelstiltskin. Yeah. He had a long gray beard and he just got sickly. And so yeah. he just basically hung in there in that embassy, did not allow the UK to touch him, potentially extradite him to the US. Right. Didn't allow anybody to touch him. Yeah. And then he screwed with the wrong people. He started disseminating information regarding the Ecuadorian president, yes. their staff. Yes. I don't know what he was thinking. Yeah. I, I think he lost his mind a little bit. Probably. Like I told you, you don't bite the hand that feeds you. If, right. if you let me into your home and that's a humble thing that you did, yeah. I'm not going to complain about the dinner you're feeding me. I'm not going to complain about you. You're going to be my savior. But for some reason, Assange decided to go full throttle ahead. And that's when they gave him the boot. But and they weren't his savior. They were more his warden. Or his jailer, because essentially he was in a one-bedroom jail he for saved seven them for years. seven years from getting arrested. But he was in jail in a sense, self-exile jail. He put himself in there. And yeah, he he rather be in that closet yeah, he, than go to a jail. Any he had day. Wi-Fi. He had video right. games or whatever. Like I said, he fathered two children, I think, and he had Pamela Anderson was visiting him, and she had a relationship with him. She's not bad to look at, you know, so he had a good time. So then he screwed with the Ecuadorian government. They yeah. revoked his asylum. Yes. And so the UK just stormed into the embassy and grabbed him and dragged him out. I put him in a van they, I, and took him I, away. I think Ecuador extracted him with him. I remember seeing that. They literally extracted him with the, with the uh, UK authorities, and then they took him to jail. They took him, took to, him jail, to jail. And he's been in the UK jail waiting for the five government to extradite him. Five years. I so believe. the reason why this deal came out, that's where I, I, we picked off. You said, hold on, you want to back up a little yeah. bit? So the reason why this is going on now it makes sense. The U.S. government is like, you know what? Even if he went to jail here in the United States, he would have done his time already. He did seven years in Ecuador, self-exile, right? Five years or so inside a U.K. prison. So that's 12 years in prison. So that basically they chalked it up to time served. They chalked it up to time served. Do you think he would have got only 12 years for all of the damage he potentially did to U.S. national security, disseminating all this info in a reckless way, as you so put it? No, but uh, the, like I said, it was a really good deal for him. Very good. And Too been good. All, well, he wasn't, he wasn't leaving the, the U.K. jail, and there was problems with extradition. So I think the assistant United States attorney, uh, they basically uh, gave up, justified it. They justified it, and this is what they said. They said that Assange was detained in the United Kingdom based on the U.S. charges for the last 62 months while he contested the extradition. And as part of the agreement, they requested him to be traveled to an island called the Northern Mariana Islands to plead guilty. So they're basically saying, and he didn't want to go to the United States. He was so scared. He was like, hell no, I'm going to go to the U.S. I'll go to that nice blue island. Who could blame him? And, and I'll take the deal. But if you're going to make me go to the U.S., forget about it. So they basically made him plead on an island that I didn't even know existed called the Northern Mariana Islands that happens to be somewhere between Korea and Australia. And they had him plead guilty there and they gave him time served. But um, I don't understand why the U.S. took this deal because as I understood it, he was in the U.K. facing extradition, already served five years. Yes. He obviously committed horrible crimes against the U.S. based on what you and I just analyzed a half hour ago. And then the high court of the UK blocked the extradition. His final Hail Mary went through and he was saved by the high court of the UK who said, hey, we're going to block your extradition to the US unless the US just agrees to one point. Don't kill the guy. Like take the death penalty off the table and we'll extradite him. And at that point, Suddenly, he gets this incredible sweetheart deal from the U.S. Why? Why wouldn't the U.S. just say, okay, fine, we'll take the death penalty off the table, extradite him, and we'll hold him in prison for life? Well, I, I can't tell you um, that I could affirm the following, but my best guess is based on my experience of doing this, he probably gave information to them they didn't have. And as a part of that information, they, they said thank you, and they let him go. They pro he, Interesting. Because they always, in every single federal case, I guarantee you, they say, you want that deal? Tell us something. 
tell us something we don't know. Because somebody brokered a deal. I remember yes. reading about it today too. There his was lawyer, his lawyers did. Was it was his lawyers? But there was it was it somebody else influential in the White House who kind of was a back and forth between uh, Assange's team and the White House. It, it it could be. You know, I I think I think that, that that might be true. But I also think that there's a waste of resources and time on this case that they just want to close. Wow. So they're they're. I mean, he's is it already, too high profile for not, them or something? Not only that, but he's not going to come to the U.S. It's going to be so hard to get him to extradite him and. And it saves face for the government because he's pleading guilty to the They got case. a guilty plea. They got a guilty plea, and he's prohib- prohibited from coming back to the United States. So in, a se- in essence, the U.S. government did get a conviction and yes. a prison sentence. Yes. Which and, time served. And if he does it again, if he goes to Australia, we will get him. So he's not going to do it again. If he does it again. Yeah, if he does it again. Correct. Yeah. I mean, if he, I don't, WikiLeaks, yeah. Well, there's a lot of cooperators that take deals and they play double agent. They play, okay, I'm going to be a good boy, but they're not really good boys. So he's in danger. If he does it again, absolutely. What if he doesn't and they just accuse him of it? Well, there's got to be evidence. If he doesn't do it, it's fine. I'm, I'm recommending, Mr. Julian Assange, that you don't do it again. The problem is that there's some complacency with cooperators. After some time, they feel, oh, everything's done. I could go back to what I was doing before. That happens in some of the cases. There was an Israeli, uh, there was actually a famous article on an Israeli agent they just picked up that was committing cyber crimes while helping the federal government fight cyber crimes. So he was helping them fight and he was a cyber criminal. They had no idea. This is very common, by the way, in cooperation. They play double agent because what happens is after a while, they're like, oh, the government loves me. I'm getting a pass. Look at Whitey Bulger. New we opportunities talk, come talk up. about Whitey Bulger. He was, a, he was an Irish mobster. That was the godfather of Boston killing people and yet helping the FBI at the same time. Right. Happens all the time. They play right. double agent. So if he plays double agent again, he's going to go down. He's screwed. He's and, screwed. And it's so interesting your insight that he probably gave him something. What could he have given him? If, well, he's got treasure trove of information. There probably was other things that he didn't post. That he might have kept I, as security? He, no, maybe he deleted. And they're like, what, what else did you have? Well, I had this video. What did you do with the video? I deleted it. What was on the video? I gave that. Okay, thank you for that information. What else? I had this video. Anything that could be helpful to the government to show contrition. There's there's something under uh, uh, the United States Code, uh, USC 3553A. It's called a variance. The government is allowed to give you less time if the judge believes that you did something deserving of that time, in other words, they'll, they'll give you a variance less. I'm guessing, because he got such less time compared to Manning, I'm guessing that he gave information to, um, to the government. And the other, the other thing is, you got to remember, Chelsea Manning was in a position of trust with the government, so she's going to get more punishment because she's not supposed to do that. Julian Assange is not a government agent. He doesn't have a fiduciary duty. He's not in a position of trust. I don't believe he was even a U.S. citizen. So what I'm saying is... But I'm not sure. But I don't think that matters. You can still well, commit crimes. You could commit crimes against no, the U.S. Well, it matters for Chelsea Manning because yeah. she was in a position of trust. She was a government... Agent. Agent. You yeah. get punished more when you should have known better. You have a higher duty to the United 100%. States. 100%. Yeah. And they, You're an official of the United and States. And she knew because she yeah. signed documents when yeah. she went into the military and she signed secrecy documents and... Uh, NDA documents, so she knew on different levels. So that's why Manny got tapped worse, and then Assange less because he wasn't a U.S. contractor. He probably gave some information. The guy's been hanging out with two self-exiled, imposed exile conditions for like twelve years. The government was like, you know what, we're done. Just send this guy home. Right. We don't want him in press anymore. So what happens to Julian Assange now? He literally walks a free man he in go, Australia. He goes to Australia. He's got a wife. He's got two children, wow. and let's see what happens. Wow. That's interesting. And he did pay his time. He suffered. Man, I wonder if his physical look is going to change dramatically. Like he's going to just look better, healthier, just more. Is he going to get ripped and like get his hair back and cut the beard and just. I know that the motion, I read the motion by one of his lawyers that mentioned his medical. They said there was irreversible damage that was done to him. Malnutrition from years of just eating garbage, just eating spam and just crap food and just whatever he whatever he could to survive and i think that was one of the considerations the united states took into account he punished himself pretty pretty much worse than he would have had he gotten to federal prison that's the funny part you really think so yes yes let me tell you oh come on yes because we as attorneys we could actually designate prisons like i can negotiate that i could get him a prison that's not so bad you know what the prison he put himself was a lot worse than the prison i would have got him in here really yeah i mean we can negotiate that's one of the things that we could do we could actually ask 
ask the judge for recommendations as to prisons. Right. But he didn't have that option because he took off. He just self-exiled himself into the worst position. Right. I would have told him, I said, Julian, I got some news for you. You could either hang out in that Ecuadorian hotel you got, or you could come back to the U.S. and I could get you inside a medium cell prison. Medium meaning you'll get yard time, you'll get dorms, uh, it'll be a much bigger room than what you have now. You'll get TV. You might even get a swimming pool. I'm going to try to get you that tennis court. Just, It's a lot different. It's, it's just Whew. it's a lot better than what you're doing out there. That sounds By great. the way, can I tell you something? Federal prison in the United States, to, to a lot of my clients that come from Russia, say it's a joke. Oh, God. They call it Disneyland. Wow. They say, have you ever been in Russian prison? Yeah, the gulags. It's, the gulags. It's a Disneyland here compared to there. Wow. You know, that's what they tell me. Yeah. So what I'm what I'm saying is what he did was a lot worse than what the federal government would have done here in prison. He punished himself a lot harder. The Crazy. government knows that. That's why they were like, okay, you punish yourself harder. We're cool with you going home. You did 12 years. Technically, you did 20 the way you did it, the way you punish yourself. Extreme conditions. Like, basically, he put himself in isolation. I mean, the hole. You know, I've ever heard the hole where you, yeah. you... He put himself in a hole yeah. for nine years. Right. So... I think if you look at it, he punished himself way worse than he would have been punished had he come to the federal government. My <laughs> opinion. Fascinating. I think a lot of people learned from this one. I, I, that's seriously amazing. So good. yeah. So here's a more of the story. If you commit a crime against the federal government, don't run. It makes it worse. Call a lawyer. The lawyer will minimize or mitigate your situation and may even be able to, if you're guilty, get you into a prison that's safe, that's comfortable. And to your liking, and we could do that as criminal defense attorneys. We could pick out the, the jail and say, Your Honor, this particular prison is good for him because it's got a drug program or it's got a welding program, horticultural program. You could get college degrees in prison. You could get, exactly. you could, you could yeah. get you MS. You could get a degree in your master's program. So we do that. Look at where Assange went and look at where I could send him to. I mean, it, really, interesting. it really is Disneyland in comparison. Wow. Wow. An amazing reflection of our system. I mean, let's, let's end on that. Yes.